Greetings everyone and welcome back to Tier No, the last days of Europe in which we're playing as the Empire of Japan. Last time we discovered a huge, huge problem with the government. Basically, so many people are corrupt and right now it's so bad that Hirohito, the old blessed man of the Empire of Japan, the Emperor, uh, has to step in to fill the government role. So, we need to select a new Prime Minister and now I'm not sure which one we have to choose. So, someone on my Discord server told me, or like put in the comments, which way we should go to make sure that we get Taka. Takeda. Takeda? Let's do, double check his name. Tak Takagi. Takagi. We want the liberals here. Liberals. Takagi. To do this, we'll probably need to select Ki Kido, maybe? Mm, we could maybe select Kido. And then ruin everyone else's reputation. We'll see what happens. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I'm really just trying this with no real idea how to do this. So hopefully it goes okay. Hope you guys are having a great day. I wonder what the next event's going to be because we've read a lot of events so far. But here we go, Kido suggests Kogori Bodan Bodayu to resolve the political snag that the Japanese government has found itself into an old acquaintance of Japanese politics has stepped into the limelight, former Prime Minister and Lord Keeper of the Privy Seal, Marquis Koichi Kido. A staunch reform bureaucrat and Ino's predecessor, Kido has largely remained in the shadows of the Japanese politics during recent years after being ousted following his aggressive attempts at to eliminate IJA influence on the civilian government. Kido has stepped forth to the Emperor, proposing the name of Kogura Budayu as a possible replacement for Ino, a relatively uninfluential member of the Yoku Sankai. Budayu has served as a minister in Kido's cabinet. While Kido's strong influence in the Privy Council might mean that Budayu could get nominated as Prime Minister by the Emperor himself, bypassing the Diet, this has already sparked a strong reaction from the sections of the Yoku Sankai that are more hostile to Kido. Perhaps the Emperor will step in. Ooh, threat of no confidence, huh? So hopefully we can get this dude, because he's got that overwhelming support here. Absolute overwhelming. We have no support here. Paranoia is literally nothing, too. Which is pretty good, and we're unpopular. But hey, that's okay. Military... Mm, the Diet threatens no confidence in Kogure. Nice, minus 18 billion. They can't go wrong, right? Uh, the unified statement has been released by the members of the Diet of the Taisei Yoku Sankai, stating that the party will not support the nomination of Budayu as Prime Minister, instead not immediately passing a vote of no confidence, signifying the end of Budayu's tenure before it even begins. Such a bold statement is especially surprising, considering that it might mean defying the will of the Privy Council and by extension the Emperor himself. Some members of the Privy Council are already calling this a bluff. The Yoku Sankai wants to be left free to play its petty political games, but there's no way they would dare openly attack the Privy Council in such an outrageous way. However, some are advising caution. If the Imperial Diet is serious, then a vote of no confidence would be a devastating blow that the Privy Council, to the Privy Council's political authority, potentially discrediting Kido and risking his position as Lord Keeper of the Privy Seal. This puts Kido in front of a quite difficult choice. Should he back down or call the Diet's bluff? We're gonna back down. I don't know. Let's just try. We're gonna back down and see what happens. Minus 18 billion. Man, this is getting me so happy. And we have stuff going on here. Good, 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 good. Looking great. An insider? The recent snag in which the Japanese government has found itself is a source of embarrassment for the whole nation in the eyes of Asia and the world. Heated negotiations between the Dai and the Privy Council, as well as within the Yoko Sankai itself, have gone so far nowhere. However, another group of politicians have weaseled into the negotiations a clique of Yoku Sankai closer to former Prime Minister Ino Hiroya. While Ino himself was a national conservative, much like his protege Ikida, he was able to create a stable political equilibrium by compromising with the opposing factions of the Yoku, Yoku Sankai, especially the, the reform bureaucrats now rallying behind Kaya. Ino's involvement in the talks have been kept largely on the quiet side, but might be the key to solving the, the mess. Quite a bit ironic, I would say. Good, good, we're almost done with... Hokuriku. Cool, and actually, just to make sure... Do they give us our, their first names here? I want to make sure that we actually get first names so I know exactly... Oh, actually, maybe they're last names. Ooh, a little bit of lag here. Maybe it's auto-saving a little bit. Oh, there we go. Takagi, Kido, Miki, Ikeda, who are the conservatives, but a suggestion. Newspapers report that a new option is on the table, likely proposed by Ino Hiroya himself. Kichi Achi, Aichi, a former minister of Ino's cabinet, is well known for his completely equal distance from all the major factions and cliques of the Yonku Sankai. His lack of charisma and commitment to a faction preventing him from initially being considered as a candidate to replace Ino. However, in this peculiar situation, Aichi might be the perfect per person to fill the political rift that is dividing the Yonku Sankai. The reactions from Kaya's and Ikeda's clique have been lukewarm, but it appears that there might really be no other choice to get out of this agreement or this admire. Kido Kochi and the Privy Council have also expressed tentative agreement with Aichi's. Uh, nomination. Well, nobody's truly satisfied or happy, with every passing day, it seems more and more likely that Aichi will become the new Prime Minister. This is really getting exhausting. Now, whoever gets elected, we're going to make sure that they have no support, and they're very, very unpopular, so... doesn't really matter, I think, in the end, so... I think we'll be okay. And this support is very close together. Appointed Prime Minister, Aichi has been. 
After one last round of meetings and negotiations, it seems like the Imperial Diet has finally found a way out of the political dead end. Ikichi Aichi has been finally chosen by the Emperor to fill the position of Prime Minister with a near unanimous support from the Taisei Yoku Sankai. With the various wings of the party that have been bitterly fought until recently now united at last. The newspaper across Japan and the sphere celebrates this development as a testament to Yoku Sankai, representing the will of the nation, overcoming petty factionalism and political infighting, and cautious tentative optimism is spreading across Japan. But for those in the upper echelons of the Yoku Sankai, there's no time for celebration, let alone for relaxing. I, I'm sure Aichi will do a fine job. Oh boy. Alright, well, let's close this out and see the dude. He's looking a little old, but not too not too old, actually. I and mean, we still have no focus tree, so we'll see what happens. And immediately, I'm going to go ahead and... Aichi, you are technically a, the leader of... Fascism, I think? Do we get... Kichi? He's not over here, so... Regardless, Kido. I'm sorry, Kido. Uh, Ikeda, yeah, they have minus nine. How do you have minus 39 conservatives in the government? Unpopular? Well, that's alright. we got enough political power to do this. There's a, so much support for these guys. How much support do they have? They have 203 members. Jesus Christ, that's so much. And we can't do that yet, but that's fine. Yeah. The inter interregnum. Just a few days into Aichi's tenure as Prime Minister, the vague air of optimism that has spread in Japan has also dissolved into the wind. The process of forming a cabinet caused endless bickering in the Taisei Yoko. Yoku Sankai, ending up with a patchwork of cabinet members made up of ministers from several different cliques that barely wish to speak to each other. What's worse, it seems that members have risen from multiple factions of the party plus to overthrow Aichi's government. The Imperial Diet, the Privy Council, the Taisei Yoku Sankai, all are a pack of wolves turning on each other after being left without a leader. While the facade of unity and optimism is paraded on newspapers on public appearances, while, and while ostensibly the party stands united against or behind Tai Aichi, the truth is far different. The real struggle for power in the Japanese government is only starting, and no one knows how it will end. The interregnum has begun. Ah, I can't wait. All I care about right now is just paying off this gosh darn debt. Look at that. So much better. We've since we began, including the annual debt interest effects on the de on the debt. We've been able to get almost below 10 billion. Not much, but that's okay. The national pol polity. It can be difficult to distinguish between truth and rumors and the whispers echoing throughout the diet. But many deputies do have a knack for telling when conflict is brewing behind the scene as a lame duck prime minister watches impotently. The Yokosankai's main factions sharpen knives and try to figure out the best angle of attack on their enemies. Chief among them are the reformed bureaucrats. Their leader Kaya has not given up on his dream of imposing a new order in Japan's economy with or without political support. Independent deputies weigh the possible benefits from supporting him with the dangers of making an enemy of Ikeda and his conservative bloc. Independent deputies have freed themselves of factional shackles, are being dragged against their will back into Yokosankai civil war. The stance between both sides is complicated by the emergence of a third power bloc, the indefatigable Takagi, has struggled for quite some time now to establish a third path between the conservative stagnation and their foreign bureaucrats' dangerous intertwining of government and industry. A small but growing liberal faction enthusiastically supports a former Navy officer's program. By untangling the economy from Japan's political and military elites, the corruption and instability of the Yokosankai can be brought to an end. Once a dormant part of the conservative coalition, the liberal faction has been given a shot in the arm by the failure of both conservatives and reformed bureaucrats to grab the Prime Minister's office. Smelling blood in the water, the Liberals have begun dreaming with renewed vigor. Through all of this, though, rumors that former Prime Minister Kido Koichi Haas has not given up his radical agenda. While the majority of the reformed bureaucrats support Kaya publicly, the perspective of a transformed Yoku Sankai remains a very appealing one. The fusion of total political and economical control with army backing remains an intoxicating idea amongst the chamber's most ambitious. Now the rumors goes, all sides are preparing their move. It seems that the interregnum ceasefire is ending. Gentlemen, sh please show your cards. Honestly, I'm surprised that they... they, they <laughs> the event, I know it's scripted and all. It says he doesn't have that much support. Are you kidding me? He has 203 members. He is the largest block in the House of Representatives, which is awesome. Awesome. Awesome possum. I'm not sure if they have possums in Japan, but that'd be really cool. So since we have helicopters, I've got to go with the air support. Naval support's cool and all, and it actually makes a lot of sense since we're Japan, but whatever. In advanced special trainings, don't mind if we do, we want to make our helicopters the best helicopters in the world. Extreme environment training. Better hot and cold acclimatization gain factor. We have a little bit more training time, but better supply grace as well. A whole two days worth. Cut, 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 cut. Minus 18 billion? Yes, 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 yes. The Takaki's Gambit. The inclusion of the Japanese liberals into the Yokusankai came out of the darkest days of the, of the war. Where united front of all Japanese politicians seems indispensable. Victory did not bring liberalization of the economy, but an ever-increasing bubble of economical or economic development for the greatest Japanese conglomerates. Yet vast quantities of contracts with the government and the army brought endless resources to feed corrupt businessmen. The Liberals, once swept aside by tidal wave of money and collusion, were thought to be absorbed into Yoko Sankai's conservative faction. The very idea of opposing the army and the conglomerates looked impossible in the New Japan. But now, under the capable leadership of Ta Takaki Sochikichi, 
So Kichi, the Liberals have awoken. They have awoken. Their goal of securing the Prime Ministership looks like a pipe dream. The Liberals command few members of the Yoko Sankai and are right against them as the full might of Japan's economic establishment as well as the leaders of its army. And so Tak Takaki prepares an ambitious gambit. With a little help from his Navy context, the foreign bureaucrats' ties to the army could be exploited for political gains. On the other hand, many liberals stubbornly cling to Eno's conservative coalition. Why not attempt to peel off as many liberals as possible from the dying conservative faction? Both paths are fraught with risk, but desperate times require hard decisions. Well, seeing as Eno's party, the conservative party, or whatever it is, or Ikeda, literally has no support, I don't want to do that. Hit the army hard? Oh, which one is it? Finish off the conservatives? Ooh... Many liberals stubbornly cling on to Eno's conservative faction. Yeah, I don't think so. Hit the army hard. That's probably what we're going to do. Let's see. I'm going to keep a leadership. Securing prime minister. Command few members of the group. Uh, be exploited. Yeah, hit the army hard. Yeah. We have to do that one. Because literally, like, we have no no one in the... <laughs> And the conservative or was a fascist faction. Context in the Navy, the Japanese Admiralty has often had a reputation for aloofness in the last decade. A vocal minority within the army has constantly heaped criticism on the Dayan army for handling of internal affairs or problems within the sphere. This attitude, combined with the Navy's weak presence and the Yoko Sankai, has left it in a political wilderness since the end of the Second, uh, second Sino-Japanese War. Now a new consensus has emerged in the Navy that its political isolation is detrimental both to its interests and Japan's future as a whole. And Takagi's the liberals, the Admiral see a serious partner able to shake up the political situation. Word on the street is that several liberal politicians have been seen altering some of the Dai's chambers and the Admiralty in the last few weeks. Speculation abounds. Most bookmakers put their money on the intervention by the Navy, publicly condemning the Army's ineptness in the Diet. Such a brazen public declaration could derail the Diet's work or help the liberals a challenge to the status quo. Tokyo's intelligentsia awaits further developments. Let's see if the Admirals land into the Diet. Mm, that's a lot of construction spending. We could slash you down for even more, but we're not going to do that. Blame the army. Corrupt, dangerously incapable, a threat to national safety. The admiral's broadside of the army and its business partners have left most of the diet too stunned to react to this morning. It's a rare event in Japanese politics where a faction to declare so boldly its contempt for its rivals are now many members of both the Yoko Sankai and the Independence whisper to one another that the admiralty has gone too far. On the other hand, liberals in the Yoko Sankai have stood behind the Navy's condemnation. One after the others, members of the Takaki's, Takagi's clique have come out with reports, data, evidence, and testimonies on the sheer dysfunction of the Army's economic work, and so the Navy and their liberal partners worked. Heavy pieces of evidence were screened by well-rehearsed speeches and testimonies. Any attempt at the countering or counteracting the deluge of accusations ran into carefully placed rhetorical minds. The only way for the Army to salvage the situation was to come out with its own show of force. Already, their foreign bureaucrats positioned themselves as the Army's defenders, as the conservative coalition keeps a low profile to avoid more responsibility for Eno administration's mess. Now the capital waits to see it. the Army reform bureaucrats Democrats reply. The army fails to make a convincing case. The army answers every accusation tit for tat. Ooh, which one do we want to do? Heavy pieces of evidence. Any attempt at counteracting ran into carefully placed rhetorical minds. Was come out with their own show of force. Mm. Fails to make a convincing case. Yeah, that's probably the better one to do. I keep coming back here, but I know it's, it's too early to try that. So, the convenient scapegoat. Oh, we can build at least a few more factories. Kai and his supporters should probably have set this one out with a public consensus. Or that, which was a con public consensus. So their attempt to defend the army backfired as Takagi's liberal casually glanced off any criticism of the Navy's conduct. The foreign bureaucrats' weak argumentation has turned in turn shown how desperate they are for army support in face of a hostile diet. While the conservatives have mostly pulled through the Navy criticism unscathed, the reform bureaucrats groveling to defend the army has not helped their image. The liberals' partner in the business community have also greatly enjoyed their performance. The army makes a convenient scapegoat for economic ills brought in by large part by concentration of power into the conglomerates. Unable to directly shake up their rivals, the second row of Japanese business elites have already decided that killing the special relationship between the army and the titans of the Japanese economy is the best way to topple the ladder. By bleeding repeatedly the nexus of corrupt money, the liberals continue to signal their free market chops with any potential partner. More and more take note of the upstart faction and its quest to shake up Japanese institutions. All in a day's work. And before we go too far, we got to make sure we keep building up civilian factories, because I love me some civilian factories. One, two, 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 two. Boom. And we're eventually going to be running out of room here, eventually. Which is not going to be good, but, you know, whatever. 30%. They're going to have 30%. We're going to do on the whole miles. Not bad. And then we'll probably start building in Korea, even though we don't have, like, they're not a core. And there is a little bit of resistance, which I don't like. Creation of the Iberian Council? Wow. We're in the fifth episode and finally happened in 63. Not bad. 
and Ikeda's dilemma. Ikeda manas Masanos Manososuke has a man a few words and it's ever and he has even fewer to spare for fools. A career in journalism taught him the value of concise prose, and the Yokosan Kai well perhaps this is the scene unfolding before him is, is so deeply kiss discom discomfitting on a personal level after all after all a man who suffers not the foolish is fundamentally disinclined to have his colleagues put on village idiot kabuki masks and dance, dance around each other howling all the while not that he has anything against kabuki dances low brows they might be dance and night or day and night the diet churns with intrigue as a sphere burns and his people's plot is this how ino side is Saw his nation going as he handed in his resignation letter? He ponders a path ahead, clean and, and symmetrical, like the kat katakana classes he used to do in his youth. He never liked those classes, the world was easier to handle than the inf an infinite fall of a radical stroke. Some of these men in the Yakusankai were close to Ino, barely avoiding being dragged down with him. They might turn to Ikeda. If he plays his cards right, a speech in the die persuading those who still believe in the old ways of things of what the Chinese call Wu Wei. His stamp firm might just throw him into the spotlight, into a position where he can fix things. On the other hand, Eno's clique has been badly compromised by the scandal. It might be better to start over, to form a new party entirely, and the liberals aren't, who aren't looking to Takagi have shown somewhat conciliatory hand. Ikeda thinks for long days and longer nights, then begins to act. All the wagons shall ride new roads, appeal to Eno's clique. Fresh barrels, fresh sake, appeal to the liberals. Eh. Whatever. I, regardless of what choice we make, I'm, I'm gunning for the Takagi. So, the consolidation while the political rumblings within the Yoku Sankai shows no so sign of ceasing. It's clear that something has changed with when Prime Minister Aichi begins his chain of what looked embarrassing like a brawl with constant shifting and double crossing and general confusion among the ranks of the Taisei Yoku Sankai has turned into something more resembling of a traditional battle. Lines have been drawn, clear factions are formed, and some have already left the playing field. The Interregnum has entered its final stage. While the outcome of this complex political gauntlet is nearly impossible to predict, most observers, both Japanese and foreign, agree that Aichi's mandate won't last much longer. Trusting the Buddha, good and bad, I've Bid farewell to the to the departing year. He's here for a good time, not a long time. Hey, look at that. Money. Ah, good. The Welsh Revolution. An unpleasant finding. Whoa. Somewhat free, definitely Welsh, and certainly an army. Yasuda Banking. Yasuda Fire Insurance. Yasuda Investments. Yasuda Innovation and Enterprises. The Yasuda Leviathan slouches like a beast over corporate Japan and leaves a long oily shadow. The group's core property in downtown Tokyo is a swirling mess of endless hallways and bureaucrats. Many belonging to other big four firms whispered of as slow they are foreign countries and the government. And the halls are full of chatter this week as the investigation has captured the minds of the company just as it has captured their news news presses. Asato Kokai is a recent arrival fresh from the university and he believes he stumbled onto something very big. Very big indeed. Errors have begun to proliferate on the balance sheet of Yasuda Bank, which is worrying especially since he's in a junior role in the bank's accounting division. But what's more perplexing still are the sources of errors. A series of large anonymous numbers attributable to Minazaka Group. The company's been all over the press recently and for wrong reasons and yet no one will tell him why the company under investigation has paid sums of money to Yasuda and for no discernible reason at all. Today's he scheduled a meeting with his boss in hopes of arranging some assistance and perhaps some and netting a promotion out of the matter. After all, it's a matter of profit, and the profit is Yasuda's bread and butter. The boss even takes time out of his schedule to meet with him personally, which is rare. The reason the boss is so willing to meet with him becomes clear when the boss slips him an envelope with an apologetic look the same evening. It reads, fire for improper levels of enthusiasm. Wow. And a short support. The representative's face is neon red as he takes the podium to invite his next speaker to the stage. It's a quiet club in downtown Tokyo, a solidly established institution about the floating world, and the remnants of the Okusankai loyalists are gathered here to drink, talk shop, and forget about their political troubles. Not talking about something doesn't make it go away, of course, but to mention that would be in itself a faux pas. And so it is left untouched. This is Japanese politics, to artfully dodge questions when they are posed, to maintain respect, for authority by remaining submissive to its abuses. Like all norms, it is widely adhered to, and that means it can be manipulated. Ikeda takes the stage and starts to speak. He calls on the audience to remember the days of Eno. Stability was messy and founded on complicity, but it was stable. It was better than the present chaos. He outlines in some details his own plan by working with the army, never collaborating, or God forbid, submitting, and so consolidating the diet. It might be possible to reweave a whole cloth from the disp disparate threads of the of the factions. As he pauses here, his speech diverges, two separate threads unraveled from the same fabric. He can offer the usual generous concessions as a means of securing loyalty, but likely Ikeda has dreamt bigger and bigger dreams than mere loyalty. He has drafted a plan for the true reform of the Japanese diet's clique party system. One that, that will ensure the brokeredness of the old system will never be repeated, but money shouts where principles whisper. What tone should it be? Let's go with money. 
Money, 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 money. And Kaya knocked out. He exited the building with his held high. Held high. He was asked whether he saw plans to take the job of prime minister, which he only said he would not actively work towards it at this time. He was asked if he supported either of the two front runners, but while he made some big hints of refusing to openly endorse either one, he said he intended to continue serving Japan to his utmost ability wherever it may be. He asked about his future plans and he reached his car, and no more questions could be asked. While Kaya may have departed the race with dignity, the truth is simply that he was outmaneuvered. He did not leave the competition by choice, but rather saw that he just did not stand a chance against any more. And rather than dragging his feet and refusing to give in, he chose to leave with grace so that he could return and fight another day. Lady Kata and Takaki fight it out and take the next few years, and perhaps someday he could return to spar again. Down to two. Ah, very good. Ikeda? Yeah, he's not looking good. Kaya's not looking good. Kido? Let's, we got fuck on Miki. That's not bad. Ooh, he probably sells actually more support than these guys. So, Miki... Attack publicly. H how many guys do they have now? 213? That's so good. Look at that. Overwhelming support. Extremism quelled. So with Kai out of the race, it is certain that Japan's next PM will hold the course to at least to a degree. Whether it be Ikedo or Takaki, Japan's establishment will hold on to power. Now it's down to the two to see which has the clout and dedication to pull it off. The coming weeks are certain to be a political battle, the likes of which haven't been seen in Japan in decades, and the nation's itching to see who will prevail. Let the games begin. Bribes and threats, carrots and sticks. It's a way that the Yakuza and Kai has always done things, whisper sweet nothings into one ear and pull the other. So it is with the Eno clique, now staunch EK to the supporters, and with ties to the establishment and their speeches and their checkbooks. The old way has always proven to be more persuasive than its alternatives, and whether when persuasion fails, well, this attitude does not translate so well to the rest of the diet, whom the Ikeda clique quickly sets out to recruit by means of what they can only describe as throwing their financial weight around. It can't be corruption if it's necessary for the preservation of the nation, after all. It turns out the diet has little patience for this yes man who watched their leader tie the government to the hated army navy complex, and over the month, 237 letters are received by various members associating themselves with Ikeda's agenda, comparing them to traitors, militaries, and western double agents. Kai and Takagi even take a breather from the inter internecine strive to put present a united front against Ikeda's antics. Representatives from both cliques uh, lambast the Eno worshippers as they are coming to be known as failures who deluded themselves into thinking the old methods are somehow going to save Japan by repeating its, its mistakes. Ikeda's men are angry and the old guard Enoites see opportunity and the tongues of flame begin to lick at Ikeda's bid for power before it is even begun. Those gosh darn fools. And that's why we said money and bribes and stuff like that for them. Reinforcing the stranglehold though, Ikeda made it the first move in the battle for Prime Minister. Being the most established candidate and the one with the most ties to the old leadership, Ikeda is essentially playing white and his op opportunity to move first was all but guaranteed. His move was entirely standard as well, save a tactical reminder to everyone at Eno's former bloc that the course must be maintained and a gentle reminder of who got them where they are in the first place. It's not a good idea to bite the hand that feeds it now, is it? This is an expected move, but not an unsound one. Huge swaths of the die owe much or everything to Eno and his clique, and as the most prominent remaining politician that in the clique, Ikeda is the one who can best reap the rewards from those decades of building connections. It's the kind of advantage that Takaki will have to work very hard to overcome, and now it's black move. Huh. Incident F-17-238. In the hot and sweaty mines that have fallen into disrepair under the Imperial Japanese Army Administration in northern Chosan, dirty-faced laborers dug deep into the earth in the search of mag magnesite, ores to be used in manufacturing in the whole miles or to be packaged and shipped across the sphere for other domestic consumption. The cl clinks and clanks of pickaxes echo throughout the mazes of mine shafts and out of the core in the industrial zone of the northeastern mountains. A group of miners hundreds of meters below the earth's surface had discovered a vein of gold ore while dragging their heavy feet down the claustrophobic claustrophobic mineshaft tunnels and were thrilled at with joy at the thought of their riches. Being so far deep underground, any officer or administrator watching over them would be distracted for long enough so that they could smuggle some of the pure gold down their deep pockets or socks. While well, they clambered over each other, shoving one another to reach a shining gold mineral, until one of the poor miners was thrown against a particularly weak metal beam. A great creaking snap sounded the, down the mine shaft, and in mere seconds the tunnel began to collapse in on itself, crushing the labors below the earth's surface. A mighty tumble shook the earth that drowned out the screams of those trapped underneath, but the administrators above were left largely confused about the source of the thud from their positions walking, watching over the quarry. Buried treasure, oh boy. Dia brawl. Power in invites jealousy. Jealousy invites scheming. Scheming invites struggle. Ikeda must contend with the rest of the establishment as he is attempting to co-opt. But his rivals and the Inuite old guard have other plans for him. A plan is drafted in the dead of night, and a host of accusations against Ikeda is leveled. That his ties with the Japanese army and navy cultivated over connections to the Inuites are of no coincidence. That he is really just a mouthpiece for a new form of military control leveled against a helpless dying country. That he intends to purge the Kaya and Takaki cliques from the power dominant of the YSK, or for, for if the old order was purged through fear and rumors and scandal. 
Surely it tends to restore by force what has been lost. The speech is given first thing in the morning is already chill in atmosphere and the die quickly turns to fiery. The speech does not go down well to say the least. Inuits accuse their peers and accuse each other of betrayal. The Kai and the Takagi cliques take token pot shots at each other and chaos reigns supreme within the tight confines of the die's preserved power structures. Representative turns against representative. At the particularly violent session of the criticism of the Eno regime turns into an irregular fistfight between politicians. The nation's cameras and press capture the image of a helpless Ikeda watching his clique turn to a glorified Yakuza chapter. And Ikeda watches his dreams of restoring some sense of order to Japanese politics burn to the ground. The situation has developed and not necessarily to our advantage. They're getting the fuss fisticuffs out, man. They're going like, hmm, we're going to brawl against each other. Hmm, hmm. One, two, buckle my, what the heck? One, two, buckle my shoe. The Ikeda Ite Stronghold. BLS. Bliss. Plus Ikeda, minus Ikeda, plus two Ikeda. I'm going to say goodbye, Ikeda. Push for Dai Supremacy. Takagi is wasting no time with striking, striking directly for the heart. Control of Dai is control of the nation, and the one who controls the nation is the Prime Minister. No matter how hardworking and competent each candidate is, in the end, the one who wins is the one who's chosen. The people who choose are the Dai. There isn't any point in dancing around it. The time to strike is now, and the only course with any chance of victory is to strike directly at the core of the power in the Empire. Right now, Takagi is simply moving his pawns into place. This is not his massive stroke, but if Ikeda doesn't properly respond to this early power play in the Diet, he could be dead in the water even in this early in the race. The duel is now truly underway. How will Ikeda counter? Kaya's plot. The disgrace of the former Prime Minister Akito could have spelled the end of a reform of bureaucratic faction, but the goal of strengthening Japan's civilian government remained a tantalizing one. The reform bureaucrat's search for a new leader was Kaya Okinoroi's big break. A bureaucrat with army connections, Kaya's strength both within the Ardai and throughout the Japanese government has made him one of the most serious contenders for the true power. A few political observers are shocked by the about face of the Japanese army concerning the reform bureaucrat clique, but since the 50s, the army situation in the sphere has continually been degrading. With pandemonium breaking out throughout East Asia in the fall of the Eno government, the army found itself shopping for a new alliance. In Kaya Oki Okinori, the military brass, has found a very willing partner. The bureaucrats' need to bypass the dies resulted in him making very nice concessions to army interests. He is thus now seen as a favorable alternative to army's beloved conservatives. Now Kaya plots against a conservative faction and the resurgent liberal bloc. Both factions detest the reform bureaucrat program, and so they must be crushed if Kaya's program is to go forward. Using friends within the died and without, Kaya is on the verge of declaring open warfare against his enemies. Time to move out and into the open. Uh, and oh, uh, Hitler's dead. Oh, well, no one cares about Hitler right now. We gotta focus on Japan. Oh my god! Takaki pushes the die. It's said that the politics makes monsters out of all of us, but monsters do not always bare their teeth and growl. Sometimes they lay low in the shadows, waiting for their traps to spring so that they may strike with the element of surprise. Takaki's advances in the die have become far more apparent in recent times. The number of members finding his proposals more than agreeable have begun to vastly increase in numbers, and the Admiral himself is making moves to quietly outmaneuver his rivals. In the diet, his face was unresponsive in the to the heckling of politicians, and his expression was a dull calm, but it was clear that Takagi prided himself with the self-satisfaction that came with seeing his plans unravel across the floor chamber, or the chamber floor. Day by day, he convinced more and more members over to his side in an attempt to secure a majority over the divided faction of the Taisei Yoku Sankai. Even did not aggravate, uh, uh, aggravate his rivals, there could be no doubt in claiming that he was quickly becoming a master of the diet. Faced with his rivals' capitalization of such a divided party, Ikeda grew sick of seeing Takagi's silently smug grins. The brewing anger churning within him would not let the Admiral see such a spiteful victory. Ikeda concluded that he too must engage in the mind games played in the diet, at least before Takagi ascended to power on the chance he could mutter, check mate. Keep it quiet for now, probably. Step up the grand plan. Keep it quiet. Rile the dust, or the diet. Like any good blacksmith, Kaya knows that rising the temperature or raising the temperature of a material makes it more pliable. By exploiting the diet's anger at the Eno government collapse, he hopes to either humiliate the conservatives who are responsible for the mess or discredit the liberal solutions. His next move thus could go in two directions. Using his clout within the diet, he could raise chaos about the corruption of the Eno era by trying to and embarrass the conservative a faction led by Ikeda. Then again, the members of the Diet are not as reliable as they used to be, and if the plan failed to make a fool out of Kaya's ambitions, the other way forward might to, might to make some calls to army contact. Uh, as an institution normally outside of political chaos, the army could bring forward recommendations on the best way forward. Moving faster than the liberals and their navy sponsors could be a source of prestige or enrage the navy into making suggestions of their own. Such an outcome could stall Kaya's attempt to outmaneuver his opponents. With time being of the essence, only axis of attack can be chosen. After giving some thought, Kaya chooses something. Who? Get a riot started on the diet? Hmm. Using his clout within the diet, he could raise chaos there. He could call in the army instead. Recommendations on the best way forward. Let's start a riot, why not? Riots never go poorly, right? 
never go poorly ever in the history of the world. So dig in. Having reinforced his position as a conservative and advocate for their status quo in time again, Ikeda has taken the next logical step, reinforcing his position as a conservative and advocate for the status quo again. If this isn't broken, don't fix it. Or at least that seems to be the line of logic that Ikeda is following, as tired as it may seem. However, even his foes will begrudgingly admit that the strategy still holds merit. To stray from the roots would be suicide at this point with how deeply entrenched they are in Ikeda's platform and continuing to gather support from those who prefer the old order and those who simply fear change will not cease to be effective until those people stop existing. The same tired lines work for a reason. I guess we can do it again. While the representatives, certain members of the esteemed die criticized us for our so-called radical agenda. Is it radicalism to desire a stronger Japan? One free of corruption brought about by former Prime Minister Eno's incompetence? One where the blood of our army's noble soldiers is not used to grease corrupt dealings in the home islands and abroad? The speech delivered by one of Kaya's proxies was an infuriating masterpiece by decrying the corruption of the conservatives while leaving out Kaya's army partners. The reformed bureaucracy or bureaucrats have sparked a firestorm in the chamber. Encouragingly, several liberal deputies have turned on their erstwhile conservative allies to decry the conservative corruption. The Conservatives have found themselves on the back foot as they are unable to shift the blame to their army allies for the downfall of the Eno government. Independent members of the Diet stand on the sidelines as they wait for the reform bureaucrats next move for the greater good of Japan. Man, I am speaking. I apologize if you can't exactly understand all of my words. I think I'm being pretty clear, but like with anything here, I'm trying to get through this quickly because there's so much. Just, uh, and I don't want to go, go through like quickly, just like rush through it, but. <clears throat> There's a lot here to unpack. Ikeda digs in. Ikeda seems more entrenched than ever, having recently taken even further messages to absolutely and completely tie himself to the conservative platform. This could prove to be either an effective blow for an opportunity for Takaki, depending on how effectively he responds, as how he tries to parry his move could have significant impact on the decisions made on MP or PM. Even if it's something that Ikeda has done a thousand times before, all he needs to do is catch Takaki off guard once and it's over. Takagi could do simply whatever he's always done. Same attack, same defense, as the game continues and neither side has gains. However, it's undeniably more appealing to try something more risky and actively count counteract Ikeda's digging. There are two ways to go about it. Either make a new compromise ideologically to gain more of Ikeda's change-fearing followers, or dig in as hard as Ikeda and, and attract more radical politicians who see everyone as too bland for them. Either one is risky, but both can pay off. Dig in even harder. Stick to the script. Compromise. Uh, we're gonna. I want to uh, double down. We're going to dig in even harder and decry corruption. Now, Kaya's plan enters its most important phase, the drafting of an anti-corruption bill that targets conservative interests while sparring or sparring the army from or sparing the army from legal reprisal. Several of Ikeda's allies have been reported to explode in anger at the scheme as they find themselves unable to mount the defense while without selling the army sponsors. The devious plan, however, is not entirely foolproof. Kai and his allies walk on a tightrope, and for a while, the liberals desire to lash out against the conservatives. The Liberals' are, Navy allies are un, a, unlikely to agree to let the army go unscathed. Using the Liberals' help to pass a bill would likely water it down too much for intended purpose. The bill will thus come down to the support of independent members of the Diet, but getting a critical mass of independent on board will acquire the type of concessions that may hurt any p politician's credibility. Kaya's allies work day and night to marshal a coalition within acceptable parameters. The bill fails. Oh, uh, let's see. If we have the Liberals help us out, it water it down too much. So, oh, passive. Attend the Liaison Conference. The Liaison Conference has been held ever since 1937. It establishes a way for the Emperor to be informed of the going-ons of his empire by the Lassiters and his government. The particular conference, though, may be the most important one ever held since the war, as while the Emperor would be extremely unlikely to directly support any candidate, getting approval from his clique could be the trump card needed to end his battle or this battle once and for all. Takagi has managed to maneuver his way in and will be attending ceremonies. Well, and we'll be attending the conference. Ceremonies, endless talk of, and meetings, conferences within conferences within conferences is, is always a bore at best and a nightmare at tedium at worst, but is some of the most fertile breeding grounds for political intrigue, and political intrigue is Japan's national pastime. Takaki's done well to move the battleground here. The Emperor's favor is four aces. And, come on, I good, good, Anti-Corruption Act. The reform bureaucrat schemes have succeeded. A new anti-corruption bill has been signed into law. While it would be gosh or gash to explicitly name names, the bill's content is obviously aimed at punishing conservative associates for the Eno evidence corruption. The greatest losers of this outcome are Arcade's conservatives, as many of the associates look at prison sentences, lost business, or heavy fines as a result of the new law. Army officers have looked on with a pleasant surprise after this brazen attack on the conservatives. After all, with most of their interests extracted from by the disaster by Kaya's masterfully designed bill, why feel bad for their erstwhile conservative allies? The reform bureaucrats have been true to their words and have proven their willingness to sacrifice much for army support. Kaya's faction has grown stronger than from the ordeal. While their ascendance is not yet certain, the capacity for to marshal some level of support in the diet surges or augurs well for the future. The capacity to blunt the conservative and liberals' obstruction is critical to Kaya's plans. More and more independent now consider the reform bureaucrats as the best way to advance their career, just as planned. We'll see what happens. And the liaison conference. 
Takaki's attendance at the liaison conference is, in da is a danger for Ikeda to say the least. There's absolutely no time to waste and a reaction must be formulated. Though it's a one in a million chance, if Takaki manages to get the Emperor's direct approval and the Emperor avoids that approval, it would be the end of the line for Ikeda's chances. The liaison conference is a deliberate dance, however, and a wrong move could just be as catastrophic. Ikeda could, of course, simply dance along with Takaki, waltzing through the hurdles, dropping Finnis tents and subtle statements to the Emperor's clique, earning support one whispered promise and one insincere smile at a time, or he could take the ultimate gamble, try to reach the Emperor himself. It would be beyond risky, but would demolish Takagi if succeeded. Ikeda would be victorious in his hand in control of the nation. How unlikely could it be? As a traditional candidate, the Emperor would surely believe him above Takaki. All he has to do is ask, right? Approach the Emperor's bitter crest to simply smile and keep moving? Hmm. Approach his bureaucrats. Eh, smoky moving. The cracks widen, so your first day tracking the flow. Flow is what we call it here at the Madhouse. Ah, uh, Uryu. Was that your name? Ahem, it won't be matter too much soon. Ha <laughs> ha. We give it all our employed nicknames after the first week. Oh, hi, Sumito. We call him the Snoring Cat because in his office, well, he snores and lies on his desk. You'd be better hope that we don't give you a similar nickname. You're not protected like Sumito is. Anyway, the flow, is that right? We're in charge of accounts for the special and general accounts. The two main accounts for the war ministry and our job is simple. See the spreadsheet? There's a flow and it works like this. Other firms spend money on bonds which are b bought from the general account. The revenue from this is channeled to the special account because the special account handles all of our transactions with the Army and Navy. They funnel through a firm you might have heard of called Minizaka Group. So the money goes from the firms to the general account, to the special account, and then to Minizaka and the armed forces. So the Army and Navy can play games with the guns and ships. Complicated, but it's like water flowing through pools that Zen Garden flow. See? You see flow? Wait, okay, so you see the numbers here? That indicates that this stream has jammed up. Yasuda, I think. Oh, darn it. Wait, this sheet is jamming up too. And this one? And that one? What? What's going on? Half the flow is jammed up from these numbers alone, and this is just the past week. Uh, Mitsu Matazuka Mat Ma -la -la -la. Matsuzaka, I want an emergency meeting in 15 minutes. If I don't get an answer, so help me. God, Ryu will be getting new friends very, very soon. Wait, what the heck is Minazaka doing? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, you better not have a budget crisis. No, no, no. You're not allowed to. No, no, no. Oh, what's going on? Oh, no. Don't, don't, don't do anything bad. Please just have Germany fall apart. That's all I want. Okay, whoo, thank goodness. Uh, who cares about the Reich? Another superpower down. Germans of war, it is thus necessary that the individual should finally come to realize that his own ego is of no importance in comparison with the existence of the nation. I love collectivism. Or the lack of individualism, at least. At the very least. Not bad. So, talk to Kido. Ikeda has been working with his magic on the various politicians and diet members who wield their tiny little torches of power in Japan, spending the past months tirelessly bringing them to his side and ensuring their loyalty. Now, however, Ikeda must face his greatest challenge yet. He will not be wooing another nervous status quo advocate or meek third-rated advisor. No, he must deal with Cold Chi Kido, a champion of reform and one of the biggest names in Japanese politics for many decades now. At first, it would seem that Kido and Ikeda would be entirely opposed, with Ikeda being the stalwart defender of the status quo and Kido perhaps being the greatest advocate for reformism in the empire. To a degree, that is true. But when facing foes like Takagi, the two could still perhaps find common ground. Takagi may want change, but his liberalism is a polar opposite of Kido's reformism, and with the right compromises, Kido may just throw his support behind Ikeda in order to stop the liberals. An interesting pairing, to say the least. Hey, maintenance companies. Of all things to do right now, we should focus on maintenance companies. Uh, anything here? Engineering is only 63. Probably not. Air accidents. Yes, I'll get compared guidance radars. Why not? And then preemptive strikes. Don't mind if we do. Oh, we had just finished this one. Nice. Very good. Uh, let's see. Uh, we can do stuff here. Logistics. How is artillery doing? We can do the artillery. Great. Ikeda in talks with Kido. Ikeda, or Ikeda, an arch-conservative and veteran serving in the in Edo administration, waved about his anti-permissive words like a weapon in the die, pointing its sharpened edge at anyone who dares to tear down Japan's age-old institutions. He has have found many enemies during this in the past, but none have stood up to his post postulations in recent times more than Ikeda. Takagites, whose rising power threatened the status quo more than not, unlike he's ever seen before. As much as it was an unlikely partnership, it was one that could both agree circumstances demanded. Kido was not one to congratulate Ikeda for his positions, nor pride him for what he fought for in the House of Representatives. However, confronted with what both considered to be an overindulgent liberal faction, the conversations they had were united by a grim determination to put aside their differences and outmaneuver Takagi's influence for good. The longer they talked, the greater a bond began to share, despite the complex relationship and the politicking of the Empire's legislature. They could both admit that it became the utmost necessary to block the advances of the Togites. 
Takagites, and the National Diet. Eventually, the smiles they shared and the winding discussions became more memorable than their huffs. Were Takaki to catch wind of this unofficial alliance, the confrontation of the Diet would set up a great defense against the threat of his faction's startling ascendancy. And look, budget. Bye bye. Strong on keto concessions. Compromise again. Compromise would be good. Uh, let's. We're gonna try to strong arm keto because that seems very aggressive, and keto might not like that. <laughs> Instead of a partnership, we're gonna strong arm him. That could not go wrong, right? Inside the palace, having attended the liaison conference and opened up communications with the emperor's clique himself, Takaki Takagi is now in the final stretches of his master plan. Now he can begin to do away with the small talk and need the ceremony and start talking to the people who matter about things that could change Japan's future forever. The people who surround the emperor hold far more power than many give them credit for, and getting on the good side is a key to having any real power in this nation. Takagi has spent a very long time getting here, but now we must tread very, very lightly. The emperor is more than just a man. He is a spirit of Japan to many, and to try to deal with him and his clique is just like another group of politicians would be an absolute suicide. No, Takagi is string on eggshells, and if one breaks, it'll be the end of the line for his chances to be Prime Minister. The palace walls have ears. Chaos and all sign, no one cares. Why should anyone concern themselves with the degenerates of the group over there? Unification of Yunnan and Guizhou. Today, the two cliques of those two nations were unified after a fierce debate held in the small city of Fuyuan. The region of Southwest China is now radically changed as the United State or Unified State is able to project influence in a way that allows it to no to near total influential control in the region. No matter the implications of this event, it is certain that the region is now forever changed for better or for worse. What the heck? Wait, they're still here. Guiz yeah, um, wait. What? House intrigue. Tom is running out just as Takagi makes his final moves in the very heart of the authority in the Empire. Ikeda must take his final countermeasures to stop him. If he does not wish to stop or stop move this quickly, then the clock will run out just as Takagi corners the king and takes a checkmate. This is the only opportunity remaining to directly move against Takagi, and Ikeda will have to make it count. The methods, however, are all difficult. The brief idea to try to reach the Emperor first was clearly a mistake, and there will be no attempt at that idea. That leaves two plans of action. While it would be tempting to start playing this palace games like Takagi, it's valuable time that could be spent on the die and all other facts of Japan's politics. The emperor may be the heart of power, but it has to be admitted that in terms of policy and actual control, the Diet and Prime Minister have more influence. Still, to abandon the emperor to Takaki could prove fatal. This ends here. Give up the emperor and try to work on the Diet. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. The Prime Minister has still more influence, huh? Give up the Emperor. Give up the Emperor. Let's see what happens. I'm, I'm going to keep doing this just because I normally don't want to do this. But we already have one, two, three, seven lines working on civilian factories. So I think that's pretty good. And I want to make sure we got enough like roads being built for the future factories as well. We have future factories we've got to deal with. So minus 18.5 billion. Not bad. Can never go wrong. Hey, Himmler's here. The confrontation, expansion into Africa. Good luck, guys. The time has finally come. Months and months of political dueling of complex games of pawns and aces and trumps and evasions of everything that makes politicians so distressed, distressed and despised. Back to ordeals, public statements, all of it was to try and gain the greatest position in the land bar of the imperial throne itself, the Prime Ministry. After so long of dancing around each other and the battling through proxies and indirect statements, today Ikeda and Takaki finally came to duel head to head. Their arguments were pointed arrows, their policies well sharpened swords. There was the final chance, their final chance to change any minds if there were any left to be changed. At this point, however, almost all had made up their minds. The Prime Minister had always been decided in the collective minds. All that was left to do was for each state his for each to state his chosen victor out loud, so that the new Prime Minister could be known to all. The duel came to a close close, and it was time for a decision to be made. Unthinkable power hangs in the balance. Come on. Come on. If I can influence the election some more, please let me do so. Uh Miki, you got too much influence here. Sorry guys, but not really. I mean, he's got a lot of support. We've made sure that he's got a buttload of support here. He only has 233 liberals, or 230 liberals, uh, supporting him, that's all, in the House of Representatives. The Warsaw Uprising, the Nazi Empire continues to go bye-bye. Oh, look at that. Oh, actually, yeah, that's not bad. Takaki meets Emperor. The decision has finally been made. Sushi Takaki has managed to scrape his way to victory. Huzzah! The announcement was met with both roars of applause and shrieking jeers from all corners of Japan. Takaki's victory is being celebrated by the students, liberals, and navy men of the empire, adorned as an underdog who overcame all odds of power and to represent their cause. To the hardliners, conservatives, and even the further of the empire, Takaki has seen nothing less than a death blow to the proud nation and to tradition. Well, Takaki may have won this battle, they're still a long way ahead. The reformists continue to call for radical restructuring, the conservatives still rattle their sabers and call for the good old days, and the corruption still reaches for the core of the Japanese government. The road ahead is perilous, but Takaki is ready to face it. This is the beginning of a new age for Japan. He actually did it! Great! We get the reformist admiral's stability, war support, daily authoritarian democracy support. 
The also some guy anti-mainstream conservative becomes a ruling party. Public approval increases overwhelmingly. Awesome. We did it, my friends. We have done it. He actually did it. Elected Prime Minister of Japan. What does the army think? And English Civil War. No one cares. We actually have focuses we can do. Wow, look at that. Prime Minister Takaki. Finally, focuses. At long last, our foremost liberalizing cause within the Yoku Sankai is barn fruit. So, Kichi Takagi has secured backing a financial, or it's a financial, a su sufficient majority within the diet to form a government, and his mandate will now be laid out for Japan in the sphere to see. Gone will be the days of flagrant corruption, abuses of governmental powers, and excessive militarization, as well as the promise, or as per the promises of the Admiral. However, we have to tread carefully with every reform, and the Japanese state apparatus is a cumbersome beast, and if it trips and falls, it will be it will trip and fall hard. But if the Admiral plays the cards right and knows when and where to pick up this battle, so he can see the start of the long term reform of Japanese society, one rate of excesses, excesses, excesses of the past. Hello, Sukichi. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hopefully nothing bad happens. I hope nothing bad happens. Hidden Heroes? Cool! We got plenty of fuel. Actually, before we get too far, you know what? I don't want to be dealing, dealing, dealing with this. I don't like Interceptors. Tactical Bombers are okay. Fighters are okay. Cast, I love. Hmm. What if we decided to deploy planes here? Anything else? Jet cast? Eh, not that much, actually. We're going to duplicate you. You're both going to train. Formation of the Africa Shield. Oh, there goes those guys. Cool. What's going on? Oh, just stuff happening. That's okay. Whatever. And then you guys will train when you can. And then let's put you guys down. Oh. There we go. That's better. Hey, another division. Don't mind if we do. If anyone needs a train, go right ahead. Soon you make more helicopters or more helicopters. Serbs rise up. Good job, Serberinos. Carl Dernit sees his Crimea. Trouble, trouble, troubling. Ah, uh, and they're all trying to kill each other off. Oh, great. Uh, you're a little bit ahead. There you go. And everything is falling apart. Don't you love it? You just love to see it. Minizaka breaks. Oh, no, 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 no. News broadcast surrounding the Minizaka affairs. A sudden and unanticipated affair. Minizaka's board manager says after the collapse of its senior leadership, the firm is now publicly asked to, from a bailout from the government. Citing its vital relationship to Hayato. Why are we seeing a firm known throughout Tokyo collapse? Stock buyouts, mass panics. Heck, I even know a guy who came all the way from Sapporo just to get fired this first, his first first week. Just goes to show management truly isn't worth a pitcher and warm. Investigation team manager declines to speak on the issue, saying only to leave the matter in the hands of the police. No comment was issued by the latter, but the officers have reportedly started br br bringing weapons home in fear of mob violence by disaffected employees. My whole life, I've spent building the beast up from the bottom. Minazaka Kia wasn't the smartest, but he was a bit of a prick, but it's for him was something I cared about. Now it's gone. Where will I go? I don't know what to do. The main question news agencies all over the sphere is asking us, what's next? Especially in light of the recent allegations that Minazaka was just the tip of the iceberg. And why are government bonds collapsing in value in response to a relatively minor industry player? Wait, government bonds collapsing? Are they too in on this? It's not news. Nothing as bad is happening. Just, just focus on the South African war, everyone. The dominoes shall stop. Nothing bad is happening. Nothing bad. Let me just do one more. Please, just one more. One more before everything collapses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nothing's happening over here. Nope. Nope. Don't. Don't. Come to Japan. Seriously, you don't. You won't like it here right now. Oh, come on. How, oh, the bogs. Bogey is smacked. He declared one somebody. Africa Shield. Oh, come on. How many more days do we have this? Five. Oh, no, no, no. Everyone is sympathetic to tradition. Oh, we might not be able to get it. Oh, no, 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 no. The Minazaka breaks. The inauguration of Sochi Takaki. Nah, not, nothing bad, right? Nothing bad's gonna happen. From his distinguished role as the leader of the liberal faction in the Diet, Sochikichi Takaki's sole approach to the premiership of the Empire of Japan came swiftly yet expectedly. As a citizen through the ranks of the tai, Taisei Yoku Sankai, it's burdened him as a natural leader. Stoke and composed, his unwavering commitment to the service of the Emperor has been impressed in, onto him during his service in the Imperial Japanese Navy. He was dressed in a noble military uniform, decorated with his wartime medals and ribbons. His face was calm and still respectful of the presence of his Imperial Majesty, the Emperor of Japan, throughout their service. Ceremony. Takagi did not flinch and move perfectly. 
Retaining an immaculate composure during his official appointment to the position of Prime Minister, he declared determination to serve the Empire to the best of his ability by honoring a righteous and just path for the nation. Few could warm up to Takagi, and even fewer had seemed small, but all in the die could recall his passionate and determination to lift the Empire from its economic and political woes and return to an era of prosperity and security. Now in the Prime Minister's seat, Mr. Takagi seeks to tear the corrupt and decadent Camarilla from the elite position and wipe clean the militarism that festered in the seats of the die so that the Empire could best, best enjoy its peaceful reign over Asia. City as she waves. Or stay as she goes. A new beginning for Yoku Sankai. The Atai say Yoku Sankai is a massive, lumbering, and flexible beast of a political organization wrought with myriad factions ranging from the conservatives to the reform bureaucrats and opposed by the ever wily independents. Unfortunately, it's only the legal political association within Japan. The vast majority of the Diet members are card carrying party members. The beginning of the Admiral's administration will require exploitation of the Yoku Sankai's weaknesses and the use of them for her own benefit. Perhaps running a tighter ship would prove the confidence of the House of Peers and would benefit us greatly in the long run, anyways. Oh, and since we're here, we gotta make sure we got more support too. We have weak and wary. And president of the house is La Mesa, huh? Established, yep. We're gonna go and do that. Every 14 days, very good. Propaganda campaign. I think we have overwhelming support. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, do it. Oh, I actually went down by 3 billion. Holy cow. Hey, we're doing better. We're doing better. Please, no crisis, please. No crisis in the Empire of Japan. No crisis because we just elected a new Prime Minister and everything will go swimmingly now, right? Still not bad. Not bad at all. Keep building. Nothing bad could happen. Well, we have overwhelming support. Wow. I wonder if we have to use political power for stuff later on. We'll see what happens. Minus 60 for conservatives. Kaya? Oh boy, there's a little bit of lag. What's going on? They're the opposition. Well, we can't do it now anyway, since we just boosted him up, so. Nothing bad's gonna happen. Oh, oh wow, minus, it jumped from minus 15 billion to almost, minus almost 19 billion. Wow. Ah, uh, blast in Manila. Word has just arrived from Manila last night, an improvised explosive device at the Gaiety Theater, one of the city's most famed movie houses, killed over a dozen and maimed many others. Our garrison, in conjunction with the city police, has begun locking down neighborhoods and breaking down doors, but no concrete leads have emerged thus far. There are, after all, countless rebel groups in the Philippines, more than one of which has already claimed responsibility through graffiti, leaflets, and pirate radio. Accompanying the update on the bombings was a new request for security and economic aid to the Aquino government. More guns, bullets, and some surplus vehicles for the security forces, and money to hire new police thugs. Filipino industries can make cheap goods for sphere markets, but their defense sector is, uh, is practically non-existent. Pra besides, it hardly even qualifies a line item in our ministry budgets. Send them some cash they need. Tell them to keep a closer eye on their theaters. It'll, it'll be fine. As long as not a Japanese soldier was injured there. But hey, we're actually going to probably be able to get to 1964. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Launch of the San Marco A. Cool. Good job, guys. Good job. Weak support. Yeah, we gotta get higher, higher, higher. I wonder how high we can raise this. Alright, mandates hurdles. The first step was to achieve power, which we've done now, to the surprise and anger of our enemies. There is no time to celebrate our victories, as now we must face the challenges of carrying out our mandate. The number of reforms we must now enact in order to set Japan on the right course are numerous. However, three issues are above all must be resolved. The first is that of the infighting between the factions of the YSK. We need to expand our small coalition to improve its resilience against outside attack. Simultaneously, the wider party must be made to submit to or comply with our national leadership, whether they like us or not. Then there's the issue of corruption, which infests every part of the imperial leadership. The state cannot be expected to function if most of its creators and guardians have sold themselves to the highest bidder. The guilty will have to be removed from power before the situation grows even more out of hand. Finally, the prime minister has also spoken of engaging in a series of demilitarization programs across the sphere. The military apparatus has become isolated and bloated and tired, leeching, leech, leeching resources that could be better allocated elsewhere. It is time that we showed some trust towards the civilian colonial administrations if we were, if we were to achieve much of anything, but we must act swiftly and decisively. The tenure of Prime Minister Kakagi begins now. Which is fine. We're, we're going to be working on this entire time. So, devastating clarity. Haruka, I have reached, attached some readings that I would have been afraid to even take out of the office the month before. Now that half a dozen firms are under investigation, I think it doesn't matter anymore. My boss, Hiromi, he is a strong man, good to his children and his wife, has, was found with a glass of industrial bleach in his hand yesterday. Oh boy. Simple truth is this. Yasuda, my work, everything has been found out. I hope that the nausea of working in a rotten bank would keep to the workplace. But it, but now it is out. And you should know too. Our funneling money to the army and navy is so they could play games with billions of yen. Our payments from Minazaka to keep us quiet while they rolled in the mud and the ugly shadow of the Kosukai. 
Kokusei, over everything. Everyone knows now, and the bonds which keep Yasuda afloat have burned to ashes. I want to tell you, my son. I've always loved him. I've always will, and I'm sorry I can barely breathe as I write the letters. I hope he will think of me as a man who's done his duty to his family, not as a rotten shadow I truly was. Perhaps he will grow up better. And Haruka, I want you to know that I think I am in love with you. You have never heard it, have you? Not for my own loves, but when I see you rushing about the kitchen or teaching Hiro, I'm convinced that I could walk with from one end of the empire to the other and I'd still be drawn back to you. I love you, Haruka, and what I could... Do, and what I do next, I do to keep you safe. I hope you will remarry, for no man could be fortunate enough to find a wife like you on his own. My secretary will just deliver this message. It closes half a million yen for my funeral cost. I apologize for the ropes burns on my necks. My eternal love, Kenji Suzumara. Um, things are not looking good right now, man. So we can do the problems of corruption. No room for failure versus targeting sweeps. Oh, I don't know which way to go. Election fraud? Army payrolls? Oh, crud. Um, protecting our democracy? Daggers and togas? Revealing of the roots? No members untouched. You know what, guys? Let me know which one should I do. No room for failure? Or targeting sweeps? And past that, I'm not even sure. Like, skeletons in the headquarters closets? Eno's mistakes? Election fraud? Army payrolls, and then we got stuff over here with cooperations, or cooperation and compromise, strength and totality, appear to the disillusion, the end the siege mentality, approaching reformism, solidify our base versus continuing his legacy. Um. Okay, unified resistance. Uh, factions of increase moderately. Probably we don't want to go down this way then. Probably want strength and totality. Probably right. Beginning the second phase, coalition of equals. Versus on our own? There's so much here. It's conservatives and liberals factions. Well, we want to make sure that the liberal faction continue, continues to increase. Strengthening the government, dealing with the others. Or, collaborate with Ikeda. Settling our differences. Ending sectarian ideals. Rehabilitate Kido. Ascend, assessing our coalition. And then we have, of course, push for normalcy. Curtail wartime privileges. Grease the gears. Ending emergency measures. Demilitarized economy. That is not bad for us, actually. Ooh, construction. Military factory construction speed goes down by 100%. Jesus Christ, that's too much. GDP will receive a boost. There's so much here. Holy crud. The new normal. Daily political power game would not be bad. Stability, East press stuff. Two-year draft, one-year draft. And then, oh my goodness, reversing the brain drain. There's so much here. Strike a balance. Prioritizing development. Prioritizing research. Electrifying Tokyo, which is not bad. Expanding Osaka, total industrial renew moving forward. Encourage Asian big science. On to better things. Holy crud. For now, though, uh, do we want to do corruption? Wrangling allies? We can push for maybe normalcy first. That might be good to do first. Our greatest national triumph. Uh, occurred nearly 20 years ago when we triumphed over the U.S. and their imperialist allies. However, it seems as if the cumbersome administrations which preceded us have failed to acknowledge the fact that the war is over. Many wartime laws and policies remain a part of Japanese life even now. The presents, this presents several issues as inefficiencies and rigidity of wartime mobilization have lasted well into the president and prevent us from making full use of the economic benefits and privileges that the sphere provides. Most importantly, dissent is growing as our citizens' material needs increase. A problem we need to curtail of our administration is to pursue any semblance of a popular mandate. Minister Yashuhiro Nakason has come up with a grand plan to gradually dismantle wartime restrictions. Also, Japan can benefit from the full strength of market forces, of course. Oh, man. Military austerity? Nope. Nope. No freedom for the military. And the Croatian winter. They will be judged by history. Good, good luck, guys. Good luck. Keep building. This one's almost good. Chukoku. Chukoku. So, who's winning the German Civil War? Hadrish is not. And England's on fire, as well as all of Germany, as well as what was Rex Commissar's Muscovine and Ostland. Vologda's still here, Vyaka's still here. They're probably still here and doing stuff, huh? Alright, cool, very cool. State of Burma, not Burmese state, but State of Burma. Also, eventually, I'm pretty sure Indonesia does try to have a civil war, so we gotta help them out, hopefully, eventually. Oh, and there goes North Africa. Beautiful, not bad. Not bad at all. The Algerian War, hopefully the conflict won't escalate. 
Yeah, they'll go to war. Actually, can I help out? I don't think I can really help out anyone here. African National Congress. They have a focus tree. They do not. It looks really happy for being a very... Probably going to be losing the war. You guys. You guys. Oh, they, oh, Hutig. Oh, Hutish. And it's just messed up here. Oh, my goodness. Happy 1964! We finally reached a new year, my friends. A new year for us. A new year for Japan. Nothing bad could ever happen, right? Hopefully not. The remnants of the war. Very cool. So, we'll read about this stuff once we do uh, curtail wartime privileges. Probably. So, the Zaibatsu and Karatsu have enjoyed close cooperation with the state ever since the industrialization of Japan in the late 19th century, a relationship which could be wise to maintain positively even amidst our liberalization programs, however. It is also undeniable that wartime contracts and subsidies have taken a decent toll on our balance of payments, putting our financial or fiscal situation in dangerous zones if we don't watch our step. Hence, it would be necessary for us to terminate some of the more outrageous wartime subsidies and contracts, ostensibly a means to improve our balance. To improve our balance of payments it would be a step in the right direction to start dismantling the incredible grip the Zaibatsu and Karetsu have over our stagnating economy. The remnants of war, though, my friends. Mr. Kobayashi lived another day in Kyoto, a city always bustling with people. They lived or rushed to work and later hurried home to their families, making their way to their billies, half full, half full in accordance with the dietary advice from the government. The noise of the city was lively, and the orange evening sky draped the aisles in a warm comfort that the limited gas supplies could not provide. The familiar scurry for house keys lost in the deep pockets of coats was a daily routine. When they eventually opened up his small home to a family, a bed and ration food, Birdsong would wake him up each morning, and he would only leave for work once a nighttime curfew was lifted. Mr. Kobayashi uh, would be sure to try and buy a sun candy on the way home, though none for himself, as prices for imports had danced in and around too expensive. Normal life was said to have already begun returning to Japan, but was far beyond the reach of the average citizen, hidden beneath the veil of national security in dire circumstances. These tight protocols had changed society away from healthy, happy lives. The peace had arrived, yet Japan did not live comfortably in her triumphs, suffering from a war that were no longer fighting. The Zabatsus grew fat from the profits, and the Imperial Navy sailed the seas, but Mr. Kobayashi often went to bed hungry, and his wife angry, and his children bored, as not long before we're living half-boiled these days. Holy crap, we lost a lot of political power there. Liberal support. We want more support, and we don't want to be unpopular. The long way down, my friends. Y Yamanashi Prefecture, Chateau Masian, Kiko Yaga. Kagahara, Merlot, about 20 years vintage. Spe specially ordered by the Imperial Palace given the date. Oda Masa Masashiro nods, closing his eyes. Cold, mildly acidic taste. Goes well with crackers, less well with substance. Somewhere in the distance, people clatter or chatter, but he can't hear it. Numbers, instruments, tools. Red lights glimmering in his mind, trails of fear and trembling. A voice comes closer, annoyingly insistent. Director Masashiro, we have finished our meeting. He waves him away. He knows more than he needs to at this stage. It's only a matter of time. Only a matter of time till the firm goes down like the boats in the Great Wave off a Kanagawa wood print. Still slightly buzzed from the fine wine, he makes his way to the elevator, swaying all the way up and down. He reaches, steadies himself, pulls himself out of the cage. Tokyo sprawls before him, a lazy beast in a glittering metal and dull concrete. Soon he'll swallow him too. Maybe the ride down the gullet will be entertaining. Someone bows to him, even more inebriated than he is. Dim recognition. Chief Financial Officer Hisagi. Hisagi says, haltingly, Musha Shiro, wait, I want up. He reaches to stop Hisagawa, or Hisagi. Hisagi says something comforting, but leads you to the habit. They are both men on a cliff, and the ground is crumbling. What can be? What can he offer? Together, they sit on the air conditioning unit and wait for the vermilion at sunset. Ooh, vermilion! Wordlessly, they watch the neighboring tower, and the light fledglings kicked from the nest. The falling of the workers one by one off its roof. Businessmen at the end of time. Average. Wary. We can improve this further. And I want to get through at least one more focus before we end this episode. I know it's a little long, but whatever. If you guys are still watching, that means you're very dedicated, dedicated, and support my channel, and I appreciate it a lot. Only minus 19 and a half billion every year. Awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. If we can get like minus 24 billion every year, that'd be awesome as well. But we'll see what happens. Uh, I think it's time to add on it. one more civilian factory line here. Thank you very much. And eventually we'll start working on these areas too. We want to do Korea. Nice. And land air strikes. Don't mind if we do. Let's go ahead and throw some vertical envelopment. Yes, please. Yes, 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 yes. And if anything for production, we got to make sure we, we can make some more stuff here. Looking pretty good on guns. I definitely want some improved ba main battle tanks. But most importantly, these things. No, wait, no. None of these. What the heck? Uh, there you go. 60s artillery. Not bad. Not bad. Pretty awesome. Let's grab. Oh, we can't grab that one. So we'll come over here and actually grab this. Very nice. Budget wise, looking still very awesome. Still two going on. That's fine with me. And soon enough, we'll have to put in more factories like right now. Cool. Boom. Always building. Always making. Always build better, I guess. Not bad. Curtail wartime privileges. And 
Very, very good, my friends. We'll read that, but the problem of sectarianism, let's go ahead and do the problem of corruption. Corruption is a universal vice of the powerful in Japan. One would struggle to not find the traces of bribery and dubious morality among certain courts of officials, bureaucrats, and military commanders. With corruption being par for the course, the upkeep of the Japanese Empire suffers greatly. We cannot expect to get much done if the po most politicians are too corrupt to listen. Therefore, we must put a stop to it immediately. Prime Minister Takagi was, and still is, one of the few that will attempt to rid the Empire of this cancer. It is safe to say that this will, this will that many will oppose this efforts. With corruption being so widespread, Takagi must choose how he will focus his efforts. Will the Prime Minister choose select targets, or will he take, his, take on the many heads of the beast at once? Denouncing Kono's excesses, the ornate room, filled with the shuffling of papers and the greetings of representatives, came to a sudden halt when the Prime Minister took to the floor. Even after decades of the battlefields of Tokyo's government, the old admiral still carried the aura of dignity and sharpness all men have had in their younger years. He stood in front of the imperial diet and adjusted the microphone. Takagi was never meant to shy away from risky action, but to point the finger at Kono so aggressively was most certainly a gamble, but his wasteful programs drove Japan into a series of disasters that it now faced. Also, he could scurry, curry favor with those who would line his pockets. It was a silent truth that Kano had engaged in a shifty activity as Prime Minister, but Takagi's allies did not have to look too hard to see how deep the prince's rot had affected the Japanese system. As he delivered a speech to the hundreds of representatives, Takagi gauged the, that the mood of the room was shifting in his favor. Quick glances saw the party hardliners dart their eyes about or glare at op opponents across the hall while the men in the more liberal cliques gave their southern approval. He paused for a second the climax of his speech the true figures of Kano's recklessness. Not just in the end, it scrolled away in the pockets of generals and industrial magnates, but the message it would send to any inspiring Japanese citizen. What sense of honor is there in the footsteps of such corrupt men? The true answer is none at all. A speech, worthy speech, as of a standing ovation. Oh, crud. That sucks. That actually really sucks. So, let me know in the comments below which paths we, we should take. New room for failure, targeting sweeps, co cooperation, 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 compromise, or strength and totality. Let me know in the comments below, but I hope you enjoyed today's long and interesting to know Empire of Japan episode. If you'd like to consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already. And I'll see you tomorrow when we ha have Takagi lead the way, hopefully exposing and getting rid of or expunging corruption. Thanks for watching. Have a great, though, rest of your day.